The Salita area was inhabited by a group of natives known as the Con Salita for many years, until the first British Royal Air Force plane landed in Singapore in 1924. Ah! Onward to Salita Air Base! The British built an occupied Salita camp after arriving in Singapore. But in 1942, the Japanese captured and occupied the camp renaming it Sarita Hikojo. After the defeat of Japan, control of the camp went back to the British. Finally, in 1971, the Singapore Air Defence Command took over, which became the Republic of Singapore Air Force or RSAF in 1975. The entire area of Sarita Camp was home to iconic spots such as the low-rise British black and white buildings, the old canteen, the Astra Cinema and the old swimming pool. The camp was divided into the West and East. Salita West Camp eventually became a civilian airport, known as Salita Airport. While Salita East Camp continued being a military base and was soon taken over by the Singapore Combat Engineers. Salita Camp is a fantastic place for my bridging battalion. The wet gap here is unique and allows us to build various lengths of bridges across here. What you see here is a light floating bridge and uh, that allows the soldiers to run across. We work as a team, and if we are short of manpower, then the bridge will not be built in a good time. So what do you do if you do not have the equipment? We improvise by using tree trunks that we find within the area in C2, and then we must make sure that uh, tree trunks are equipped to hold infantry soldiers running across, as well as vehicles crossing in. As combat engineers, we are always first in and last out. The success depends on how quickly we do our tasks. The team spirit of Bob and his fellow unit mates lives on today through generations of proud combat engineers who still train in Salita Camp. But Salita Camp wasn't just home to the combat engineers. The 160 anti-aircraft gunners, one of the combat units under the RSAF, were also housed there until 2002. Anti-aircraft gunners defend Singapore against hostile air attacks. I was an air defence system specialist with 160 Squadron and I was part of the anti-aircraft gunners team. Anti-aircraft, tell us more about it. We train in air defence and operate the 35mm AA guns, which is about 5,000 kilograms heavy. So it takes a lot of teamwork for us to move that piece of equipment around. Physical training is a very crucial part of our training in order to keep us in tip-top condition. In terms of war, our equipment have to be deployed out very quickly in order to prevent airstrikes from happening. And uh, airstrikes can cause severe damage to property and lives. So we quickly get out there so that we can prevent precious lives from being lost. You have to be able to identify friendly aircraft in an instant to avoid hitting them. Did you spend a long time memorizing all the different aircraft? We test each other regularly to make sure that we remember and memorize the aircraft properly. And uh, we don't get to see aircraft every day, so keeping our memory fresh is very important through regular testing. Let me test you, Amanda. What's this? F5 Tiger. This? F16 Fighting Falcon. This? A4 Super Skyhawk. Last one. This? UH1. Very good. Thank I'm you. impressed. Thank you. You said this particular spot in Salita Camp holds many memories for you. Why? The chin-up bar is where we used to do our 18 chin-ups each time before every meal. And sometimes we even do multiple sets of 18. Multiple sets of 18? Yep. You must have hated meal times. Oh yes. I remember going to the cookhouse with trembling hands every time. Besides the pull-up bar, the parade square is also one spot that holds a lot of unforgettable memories for a lot of my course mates. I'm sure every soldier will have his or her own unique story of the parade square. 
Exactly. We were called the Millennium Batch because we crossed over from 1999 to 2000. So our course commander made us clock 2,000 rounds around the parade square by the end of our 11 weeks training. 2,000 rounds? Yep. That would have taken me a lifetime. It's crazy, but we did it. And I would say that's probably the 160 spirit that we have. Do it once, do it good, else don't do. We work hard and we play even harder. Each time when we want to celebrate a victory, we always end up with Steamboat and the iconic song called Ai Pia Chia e Ya. Oh, I know that one. Really? Ai Pia Ya Chia e Ya. Today, part of Salita Camp has been converted to civilian use. The 160 AA gunners are no longer at Salita Camp, having moved to Chongpang Camp in 2002. As the SAF grows, so too does the Defence Ministry's construction capabilities. The need to optimise land use for defence has led to many innovative solutions that overcome the fundamental constraint of limited land, land that could otherwise be used for economic or social development. Hey, hi Ben. Hi. Wow, Salita Camp is huge. I get lost in here. Oh, it was even bigger previously. Really? <laughs> Indeed, engineers from the Defence Science and Technology Agency consolidated and redeveloped Salida Camp into an advanced military camp. What was then only Salida Camp has been transformed to house Singapore Combat Engineers and our commercial aerospace hub in the same amount of land. Although Salita Camp has lost much of its idyllic old world charm, the conservation of two military buildings and 32 black and white bungalows helped to preserve the rich history of Salita Camp and continue to represent an important time in Singapore's military history. Construction on the Salita Aerospace Park will be completed in 2025 and it looks on course to be the leading aerospace hub in Asia boasting a world-class infrastructure. Just like with Bob and Amanda's stories, that same spirit of excellence is reflected in all that we do and is sustained even as the old gives way to the new.